All right, we seven minutes in. Let's go. He terrible. Just you fucking with me today? I'm fucking with y'all. <laughs> See how that well, shit hey, works? Hey, make sure you say your nephew did this shit. That's what I'm saying. Hey, 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 look, hey, look. Kick some dirt on that nigga too. Fuck it. <laughs> Yo. Hey, leave it at the shop and make him go get it. Saw Suey Leather Fade John. Jump ball, let's go. Who got it? I got it. Yo, game ball today. We lit. Let me tell you something. These young fellas, they try. They try, they try, they try. I'm not going to say no names. Turn the streets up, E. Turn the streets up. They 4 0 today. Old heads. Young balls, they ain't got nothing. Game ball the whole team since we ain't take no L's. Happy 4th, y'all. Project 2025, be informed. Don't wait till it's too late. Audience wanna fuck up the pod and shit, that's why we can't get monetized. You cussing a mile a minute. I am cussing a mile a minute. First two minutes. We ain't on a new track yet, that's why I don't give a nigga. Yo, shout out to the Boat Boys. Here you go, bro. It's like, <laughs> listen, so, yeah, game ball, today, T, they play good. You know, you got to give the old heads something, you know. To, what you want me to do? I'm sorry. You know what I mean? You got to give them something. Yo, real shit, I'm going to start it off funny and nasty. Yeah, you have company, you ever have company, and they fucking, oh they, my they, what? Just I'm about to storm. ask you. Yeah. A sailor. Yeah, we're not there yet. We still got to get the new intro. We got to practice. Listen. You ever have company and they skid you up? What that mean? I don't understand. So when you, <laughs> so when, you, when your company come up, what color tiles you give them? White. <laughs> yo, yo, don't wait till you come visit to take a bath, my nigga. Come to the house clean. I got throwaway tiles and washcloths and shit. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yo, y'all wild. I'm just asking because sometimes they be disrespectful with it and act like they don't know what what they did. Ooh. So my house is a very interesting house. Okay. It's but you kid. got kids, though, so your right. kids probably crazy sometimes. Well, my kids are going to be kids, but, like, right. my sisters, you know, my mom, it's like open door revolving, you know, oh, like okay. 10 minutes away. So it's like, okay. ain't nobody come to my house, like, because of my kids. It's just different. But that is kind of wild. Death. It's very wild, bro. I, the first do you time, wash them things or what you do? No, they go right in the trash. This is throw away. Yeah, okay. what the fuck? Like a towel is $10, 12 $20 at the most. They, the, the good ones too, the ones that fluffy that don't really dry you. They just, they just soft. Bro, I must have motherfuckers start bringing their own shit to the house. Cause when you do that, like we ain't got money to throw away cause you don't want to be clean where it counts. Hey, so listen. So I'm gonna stay away out of this dirty stuff and talk about some clean stuff. Uh oh. So before, you know, Eric's a county corner back to gather. Oh, again, Eric's right? a county corner. Holla at your boy. Show me so, how to get some money. So listen, we, uh, I can't show you how to get it. I, you know, I'll structure it for you, but listen. Mm. Talked about the three major uh, financial statements, income statement, balance sheet, cash flows. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, let's go balance sheet, right? BS. BS, not the bullshit. I still got that 50K LOC for the young boy. So listen, we're going to go to balance sheet and we're going to talk about, remember the uh, formula, assets equals shareholders equity plus liabilities are cool. stay in algebra class so we going to go in the assets part okay we gonna talk about assets so there's like three main assets you got equity fixed income cash and cash equivalencies right okay and then you can break them down even more too and i'm not going to go too far i'm just talk about one of them today yeah so i'm gonna talk about cash and ca cash equivalencies we call those okay. assets current assets right okay they are called nominal accounts, which means that they close at the end of the year. What does that mean? Like when a company is done at the end of the year, you got they got to report certain financial statements. That means they zero all those accounts out and start over a new year. But the key to cash and cash equivalents, why they call it current assets, because they can get translated. Because the most pure form we call liquidity is cash, right? Sure. Cash is the most liquid thing. Okay. Then you have cash equivalencies. What's that? money orders and stuff like that like a next step down to get over there to make it cash to make it liquid right not checks though checks as well checks too checks. okay yeah because those is like 30 to 90 days so like 30 to 90 days that's what makes it a quick and then you know i lied i'm gonna go even further i'm gonna talk about fixed income right? okay 
And then those three main types, and then you got six different categories of assets, but those are the six, those are the three categories, and then it's six of them that get broken down, all that stuff like real estate, crypto, you know, but real estate would be like a, a fixed asset. You know what I mean? Because it's something you can actually touch, it's tangible. Sure. Like uh, when I said equity, that's stocks, right? And then into stocks, you can go into, you know, hedging, futures, and all that other stuff, stuff you didn't even realize, which means you can make money off something. Like say if you bought something for a dollar and it translates into five dollars, you have an unrealized gain of four dollars. It only becomes realized so you gain it. Stay on your politics because that's what Biden tried to do, was try to tax people on their unrealized gains, which would cost people a lot of money. What people though? People that have stocks. Typically Period. the rich. Well, it's, I don't think it's rich, the informed. Because I'm sure you have stocks too. But I also consider myself rich. Okay, whatever. So, <laughs> I'm so, just saying. so basically, it, would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair because then it would be like other loopholes you would have to do. And I don't want to go too far into that. Right. Like the how to defer your unrealized gain. It wouldn't be fair. So that's the whole point of it. And then you got derivatives. What's derivatives? That's basically when you make money off like your stocks and all that stuff. Right. So it gets real interesting, but that's basically how you do it. And you know, cash is the most liquid form. That's why you do all that stuff. Like a cat, like a house is still, it's not liquid. You can liquefy it and you know, you can pull out what's called equity of right. your house. And there's different avenues and different tools. So I'm just trying to keep y'all more informed on how to do certain stuff and how to move around and stuff like that. You know, the key they always say, right? They said this back in the day, they say cash is king. That is true. Kinda. Just in case, right? It's not smart. I say these for many reasons. It's not smart typically to spend all your money on one thing that you purchase. Like, it, you know, when you got sent and when you get to a certain stage, you do investments and your investments, they pay for your activities. Right. But even if you have enough money off your activities that you made, let's say you made a hundred thousand, right? Okay. I made a hundred thousand. I'm not going to buy. I'm just talking sure, something, sure, sure. anything and spend, give them a hundred thousand check. Cause then I just put all of my money. Like, sure, it's your money, but let's be smarter about it, right? I would take that 100000 the way I play. I would just reinvest in like certain things and then pull that money off of that because credit is really king. That's sure. really what it's about. And then you have your money and then have some other stuff because risk is risk, right? And I'm young, so I could be way more aggressive with more of my funds. Yes, you can. Someone like Dodge Age, he could be aggressive, I'm old but as shit. not as much, right? Let's say he got 100000 in his 401k and all the Times stuff. Times that. I would... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just talking that shit because listen. I would like, I would go 95 for me. 95.5? Or 90.10? Yeah, 95.5 for me. Okay. At your age? Yes. Okay. I would go very aggressive. Okay. Especially, oh my. Okay. I'm wrapping this up. I would go 95.5 more on the equity side, um, especially when COVID ended. Oh, yeah. I would clear out everything when COVID stopped because scared money don't make money. But when you reinvest into that money, Something that was a hundred dollars when COVID hit, it came ten dollars. So if you would have got in ten dollars and not be scared, scared money don't make money, but also be smart with your money. Bars, listen. So I would have had more money. So somebody like Dodge, I would probably put a hold on fifty percent, and I would go into fixed income more so bonds, and I would get a lot of corporate bonds, and I would get a lot of bonds from Philadelphia because they pay you back and then maturity right. discounts and all that. I don't want to go too far. I'll talk about all that on the next time. I'll talk about different kind of bond series A's, double A's and stuff like that. And uh, I'm actually probably, I'm going to try to bring y'all some bonds in that like y'all can like actually buy. Or look at. $10, $20. And like, you know, the best kind of bonds is the judiciary bonds. Okay. You know they ain't never going broke. Yeah. Somebody's getting locked up. Somebody always. So listen, that's a great segue because I was talking to this dude who was, and I hate to do this, but I see people trying to brag right. about shit that really ain't doing shit. Right. So the dude had put up this Nike stock ticker, right, where he said he was losing money. So I went back and I looked at the historical data. And I know this shit, I might be nerding out on y'all, but this is the type of shit that you have to put in your fucking toolbox so that when your time comes, you can understand. So he was bragging, like talking this big shit. Oh, I lost 17%, blah, blah, blah. I looked at the Nike stock yesterday or the day before Tuesday. It was fucking like $75. And he said, oh, if you only fractionally. 
And I said, 75 dollars, bro. How you fractionally said? I said, oh, you know what? I told my dude, I said, he buying that shit from Cash App and all that other shit. The money actually you could buy fractional stocks. You can't complain to me about you losing three cents. You ain't really, you just doing it. It's like going to the casino, playing a slot machine. You ain't in there to win. You just in there for entertainment. So I told the dude, if you look at the historical data, the, the fucking volume on the day you purchased was 125 million, right? I said, you know what? I know from experience, seeing 125 million one day and then like 12 million the next day, I said, all the money makers was dumping their stocks the day before you bought in when motherfuckers was dumping, which means you bought on the wrong side. You bought the dip thinking you was buying the fucking peak and you just you in a losing cycle because you chasing. Back to what he was saying, I'm still aggressive at my age. I'm 52. So my mix is still 90, 10, 90 stocks, 10 bonds. And that's because the stock market right now is going crazy. And like he said, I realized my most gains during COVID. I'm not managing my own accounts. Mm -hmm. However, my account manager is going, he knows way more than I do. So he's in saying, with my entire egg, saying I'm going to take this, I'm going to just throw out a number. I'm going to take this 500000 And this is why I say that little $3, you just having lunch entertainment. I'm going to take your 500 and I'm going to pick up these Fortune 500, Fortune 100 stocks Blue chip. today and watch what they do tomorrow. Pull those gains out, stack that on top of what you already got. And then the next day I might, and I don't mean to talk shit and please don't take this the wrong way. So I don't check my account every day, but I could go in one day and see like a $25,000 dip for better or for worse. If I check that shit every day, I would go crazy on the days where I'm losing money. So young bulls, time is your best friend. No better time than now to start putting away a little bit of money. Every check, $20. When you get a raise, dump your raise right into your fucking nest egg. And I tell you, by the time you my age, my bad, you don't even have to walk or uh, work. Hey, and we gonna keep it here too, because we gonna wrap up pretty soon. Listen. Oh, okay. What he was saying. I don't like wrapping up, but go ahead. What he was saying is true, but listen, what he's saying, and we're going to keep it the finance talk. Okay? Sure, sure, sure. We don't want to lose nobody. We really want to give y'all information so y'all can really need and use, and, and we try to digest it fast. One, really quick, about what he was saying about this guy or whatever. I don't know what form or what what it was. I'm just sure. making assumptions. Sure, sure. Right? I'm really not saying nothing to nobody. I'm not even saying nothing. Because some people, right, I can talk very, um, I can use a lot of words and confuse people. Technical terms. Yeah, I can do that, but I don't try to. I try to give y'all, make it digestible. Sure. Notice about the stock market, right? Mm, you, it's not the best to day trade. Understand, everybody got different plans. Dodge, what he's saying, he's aggressive at his age. That's cool. He's picking up something, or he wants to get something. He has a goal in mind that mm -hmm. he wants to hit, mm -hmm. right? So if he's pulling out money here and here, he's not. When he says pulling it out, he's pulling it out of that investment and putting it in somewhere else. Because, right, Stock market, you've got to have stock for at least a year in the account. Because if you don't, you're going to get hell, hell with something called capital gains tax, right. right? And that's what so, I told him too. And you you got to make sure you understand what capital gains is. If you don't know what that is, look it up and get some information. The best thing I would like to do in my purpose, what I like doing is educating, you know, black and brown people. Because most people don't reconcile their bank account, bank statements. Most people don't do this stuff. And it's always good right if you at the end of the month right the month kind of for me kind of just close at the end of the month if you don't know if you got surprised looking at your bill then you're doing something wrong you yeah. should kind of know like i know where i'm hitting at everywhere else and you just try to get people on the paths to get there to get to ultimately financial freedom and i'm very wealthy right i don't brag at all but i'm very wealthy but i don't define wealth in material things or money i'm wealthy because my family my kids I think they like me and they might love me. And I seen some on IG, I know it's a lie, a lying place and dirty place, but I seen some about, and this ain't no slander to the moms, but I seen something about, they said, if you grow up with a dad, you're more likely to do certain things. I seen one of the things that was interesting, it was like, you're twice as likely to go to college, mm. to be like more financially disciplined or whatever. Sure. 
And I want to hear your opinion about it. Also, I just want to say again, no slander to females. Oftentimes, when you big up something about somebody else, you think you put somebody else down. Right. And it's really not. It's just stressing the importance of fathers and their kids' lives. Because That's true. Fathers can do different things um, that moms cannot. And also, you know, like we go through a lot of stuff. Like, you know, we wasn't here on Father's Day, but shout out to all the dads and like keep going and keep striving. And it's just like, it's interesting. And I love breaking the mold and always people seeing me in different places where they don't expect me to be. Sure. Doing it. The way that you're doing it in those places. Maybe better than what you thought I was supposed to be doing. That part right there. So to answer your question, I always say if I had some guidance when I was younger, I'll be through the fucking stratosphere right now. It took me actually and don't take me as an example just listen to my story it took me telling my family immediate family fuck out of here you keep dragging me down before i ever got really successful a lot of us what we do is we get that first piece of success and then we try to lift everybody up and so what you do is in my opinion what you do is when you try to lift everybody up everybody else up who don't want to be up with you you actually pull yourself down. So I just put up something the other day. I said, yo, if I had just a little bit of guidance in my life from anybody, mom, dad, even an uncle or a cousin, sister, fucking aunt, I'd be able to take care of them all now. So now it's kind of, I'm, I'm an asshole. I, am, I'm, I ain't gonna hold you. So they see what I was, right? And they see what I've become. And they think what I am is from what I used to be. And it's just not true. I actually had to start all the way over. A lot of them don't know that. However, women and men, men should not have to fight to be in their kid's life and women should not be holding the kids as a bargaining chip to keep the man in their lives. It's the dumbest shit ever because you're not only hurting the kid, you're also hurting the father. Co-parent don't share a kid. Don't share a kid. And also, what Dodd's saying, he dropped some jewels for real. And if I can remember what he just said, right, about your family. Yes. Listen to this social economical stuff right here. I'm about to leave. We're probably going to leave y'all with this, right? Okay. If you really think about it, our it's reasons why we're like this, though. We didn't, we're not, listen, African-American people, we're not lazy by default. Like, it, there's a lot of impacts we have and a lot of different things we got, in, got into. I ain't going to go into far into detail, but follow me here. Socially economical, right? Economically, we are kind of taught or slandered or bred to help out our family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other races and generations, like Caucasian people, with their kids, they most of the time pay for their kids' school or they come out debt free. Right. And they making money effing right. around doing whatever they're doing. And right. they're free to do a lot of stuff. Yep. When you're free and your mind's clear, you can be very creative. Okay, cool. Follow me here. When they make their money, they're not giving their money to their parents. And if they did, their parents were like, we don't need your money, Billy. Right. So it's like we have an obligation to when we get successful, because I know when something happened, I know the first thing kind of my mom said. But, you know, that's how I feel, right? Like I was, sure. you know, I was, had a mom and dad, but like, sure. that's my girl. And so like, you know, but that's how we're kind of taught. Like, honestly, if you really, really think about it. So and other races aren't, aren't like that. For some reason, it seems like we, when I say we, we try to look more wealthy than we actually are. And that right there is pitfall number one, right? Pitfall number two is we feel like, cause we got it, we got to give it to everybody else at our own detriment. And so for me, I tell people all the time- You feel I'm, like that? No, I'm very stingy, but I know that I'm stingy. Oh, cause I don't never feel like that. And I know that people can't call me for anything. Cause if somebody say, I got it and I'm trying to keep it. Sure. That's what people say. So You got it and I'm trying to keep it. So my wife is from a different, she's cut from a different cloth. Right. So my wife is always like, oh, you need to borrow 50? Here, just get it back to me when that power move happens. I need terms, conditions, everything. So it's a little different. And for me in the beginning, it was weird. Like, yo, you just gave them 50 grand. Like what, like what? And it would kind of make me upset because I felt, I know if I gave my, that money to my family, it would never come back. Never. Did the money come back? It's, yeah, it came back. Yeah. Hey, shout out to my guy. You know what I mean? He don't support like that, but shout out to Who my that? guy. My, 
my guy. Ain't Say a name, my name. I can't put it. Okay, no name. name. But shout out to him. Shout and out. His wife. They just opened up their dentist office. Oh, they we do. Gonna, we gonna get some marketing from them. We gonna run up a bag. So. I need the whole. I need six on. I need six on one. Six on, six off. Six on one. Six, six on one. I'm going to Costa Rica. Hey, can you cash at me? I need fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars. Hey, listen. Anybody out here? Send me your cash app. I'm gonna send you. Uh,